the principles of teen spiritual formation. I believe that the church has under challenged students, teenagers today. One of the key characteristic traits of the Gen X and really the millennials, their older brothers and sisters, one of the key characteristics is specialness, competition, okay, and education. And they realize that if they don't get the grade and if they don't uh, compete, the competitiveness is also one of the key traits. Uh, you can read Kinnaman, you can read um, Howe and Strauss. All of these, uh, these articles and these researches that have been done show the competitive nature. Like, and I think part of that is because if students don't get the grade, then they don't get help to pay for an expensive education, right? So I think the church in many ways has missed challenging teenagers, okay? I think we have delegitimized their hunger and their passion and their, uh, their education, their mentality, okay? So what we're gonna do is throw away childish things tonight a little bit. And I want to make a couple of statements that um, maybe they'll make you mad, right? This whole programming versus content argument. Programming versus content. So many of us in youth ministry spend more time in programming, event-based um, operation, than we do in content-based operation. So it's the program versus the, the people. You know, you hear it said that way if you use the two Ps. Program, events, ver systems, right, versus relationships. So you have the creative element versus the content element. And listen, I'm not here to say tonight that creatives aren't, don't have content or creatives are, you know, uh, bo creatives are just fun and they're there to party and we're going to have a great party. I'm not saying that. And you'll see what I, I'll, I'll get to answering that in a few minutes. But I wanna ask you a simple question as we start this. Where do you spend most of your time? Where do you spend most of your time in youth ministry? Uh, finding YouTube videos for the bumper, you know, action, action in the flow of the youth service? Finding some cut off a movie, you know, to support your scripture? More time putting games together like Nine Square and Gaga Ball and right shaving our head for for uh, youth for for speed of light missions for like a, a, a missions offering and if we shave the head of the youth pastor we'll get more money you know are we at these gimmick things listen some of us spend more time creating roller coasters and amusement parks and ultimately youth groups than we do discipleship content theology and youth ministry. There's a huge difference between youth group and youth ministry, right? And listen, I love the attractional model, okay? I think the attractional model is important. I, I'm not saying, so anyway, let me get to this and I think you'll see it. I read an article, sorry, Vanity Fair. <laughs> yeah, I don't like normally read Vanity Fair, but it comes, it comes to my place because the person who used to live here used to, got it and I get these free subscriptions for like six more months, so. Soul of the Machine, a great resource. I've read this three or four times, the soul in the machine. And the idea is, are we just pushing machine, 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 creativity, creativity, right? This, uh, this right brain uh, party all the time, or is there any content whatsoever to America, right? I mean, think about it, the Super Bowl just got over. And all it was is, is creativity, creativity, creativity. Do we forget about the content of the game? Those kind of things. So a great article, uh, Vanity Fair, The Soul in the Machine, um, so, so good. Um, I'm gonna give you five points on how to deepen the youth ministry, okay? Five principles, and I gotta go through them really, really quick, because we're like at seven, eight minutes right now, man. And so we're almost done. Um, so I'm going to give like a minute on each one of these things and then I'll answer that, that final question. How to take the youth ministry um, deeper and not just wide. Because we have a problem in youth ministry in America today. We are a mile wide and an inch deep. And I think it's because we've under challenged kids. So here are five ways that you can challenge teenagers with spiritual formation. And this is up on the website. I already wrote it. So it's all set and ready to go. And I take this deeper than this discussion, so please make sure you go there. Number one, 
it is not time to major on programming. Now, I'm not saying there's no need for systems and organization and administration, okay? That is not what I'm saying. So those of us who work in the left brain, right? Cognitive, that, that, that brain, listen, I'm not telling you to forget, I'm not telling you to stop with administration and organization. Think about this, arguably the greatest miracle that Jesus ever did began with the gift of administration. Remember when he fed the 5,000, which to me was, you know, you know, we've read the theology of the 25, 20, whatever. Can you imagine what it took to do that? And the Bible says that he asked the disciples to put them in companies of 50. So to do that incredible miracle, it took a system of organization into groups and squads and crews and whatever. This is not, but hear me, if that's all we major on is making sure that the youth service is slick and, it, and, and all of our handoffs are great and the bumpers all good, but the kids never experience presence, why are we doing this? Because programs and roller coasters aren't going to change kids' lives. <laughs> programs and roller coasters aren't going to change kids' lives. They get bored of roller coasters. And then all you have to do in youth ministry is try to build a bigger roller coaster to, to attract them next time. Presence, babe. Okay, number two, because I could get preaching on that one, right? Um, it is not time, number one, it's not time to major on programming, but it is time to major on spiritual formation. Where are the leaders of the church going to come from? We talked about this in week two, the sustainability of the church. Youth ministry is the sustainability of the church. Where are the leaders for the church going to come from? Youth ministry, right? Us. When I'm teaching them um, in my youth setting, Wednesday night, Friday night, Sunday night, you know, whenever that is, when I'm teaching these students and these leaders what's coming out of my mouth, the content, that spiritual formation, those are the people who are going to lead the, the, the church in the future. Those are our leaders. As a matter of fact, the latest statistic that I've seen is this. And this is on Barna Research, Barna.com. 30% uh, of Christian teenagers in America can name half of the Ten Commandments. 30%, only a third of teenagers in the church, Christian teenagers, can name half of the Ten Commandments. What is wrong? Right? So I think we need to, uh, number three, take uh, the Bible serious. So number one was it's not time to major on programming. Number two was it's not, it is time to major on spiritual formation. And number three, it is time to value theology. Values, the valuation of theology. Okay, the valuation of theology. And what I mean by that is, is sim simply this. The Bible illiteracy that we see, the spiritual formation issue number two, the Bible illiteracy that we see, we need greater creativity with theology in, in youth ministry, okay? Let me give you a couple of ideas. Um, what, what about youth leadership um, teaching through the Ten Commandments, the Sermon on the Mount, the book of James? You know, the book of James was written perfectly for teenagers because it was written by a young adult who was Jesus' brother. Think about that. Can you imagine being Jesus' brother, first of all, right? I mean, talk about pressure. Everywhere you go, people are like, hey, I want to hang out with your brother, you know. If we could get these students into the Word of God and memorizing the Word of God, the valuation of the Bible, of theology, can transform a youth ministry. Let me tell you something. You might think that students aren't smart enough, that they're bored of it. Let me tell you something. At some point, students are going to get tired of amusement parks unless they build a bigger roller coaster. But there's a content, there is a hunger for content in the students that I see across this country. Listen, they can go to the cinema, right? And sit in front of a theater and understand history, understand biology, understand uh, this, this narrative that is woven through, through, uh, through a movie. Um, all these, uh, uh, all the Hunger Games and the Star Wars, and they, they attach all this together. They're smarter than we think, okay? And I think what has to happen is we have to let them know that Wednesday night is going to be challenging, that Friday night or Sunday night, youth, the youth ministry, service setting, small group setting, however we do that, is going to be challenging to them, right? Okay, um, number four, 
Number four, this is one I love to talk about too, and that is youth leadership mentoring. Personal, relational. You know, do you know how many youth leaders I know that would rather hang out in the green room than the lobby? I was at, I was at a uh, youth convention and my host picked me up and said, hey man, you know, I, we got about an hour. I wanna get you, you know, back to the green room. And I'm like, hey, no worries, no, I don't wanna go to the green room. I just, hey, I'm cool. I'll see the leaders at, you know, in, in a half hour. Take me to the lobby. I wanna go meet the students. And they're all, hey, right? They're all setting up and they're getting ready to come in. And I just started walking around. I said, here, take my bag. You wanna go to the green room? You can go eat a banana for me or get a water or something, right? I wanna hang out with the students. This is this mentoring, coaching, right? So the relational capital of the Gen X and the Mills is through the roof. Now, I know what you're thinking. No, it's not. I mean, it's like, like, unlike, share, right? I get that, which I think is a direct result of their hunger for relationship. So if youth ministry is more concerned about crowds than people, we got a problem. This, I know leaders, I went through this too, man. I know leaders who are bummed that 25 showed up and not 40. And they forgot about the 25 that were there, right? Listen, we cannot be addicted to crowds. We cannot learn, we cannot simply love crowds and not like people, right? So this mentoring thing, that, that's good. Number five. Okay, number one, uh, it's not time to major uh, on programming. Number two, it is time to major on spiritual formation. Number three, the valuation of the Bible and theology. Um, number four, number four, youth leadership, mentoring, and coaching, and that relational capital in building theology in our kids. You know, um, man, I break it down more uh, in the block. The last one is uh, creating a culture of accountability in youth ministry. Let me say it this way. We need greater peer influence, okay? We need greater peer influence in youth ministry. We need students to be driving students to a greater spiritual hunger because the spiritual kids and the kids that are hungry for God are more attractive. They're the ones that are driving the youth ministry than the kids in the back or the kids in the front, whatever, that, right, that are distracting everybody. So... I want to I want to give you some ideas on how to build a culture of accountability. Uh, have mic drop night, spotlight night, okay? Where you take youth ministry is doing this across the country, where you take a student and you highlight them that night and you let them tell their story in 90 seconds, right? And you give them the mic, and when they're done, they drop the mic, right? And the place goes crazy, and we put students up in front of our students because we're modeling we, what we want them to be like. Right? Um, here's another one. Um, what about building positive cliques? I hear, I hear leaders say all the time, man, I'm trying to destroy the cliques of my youth group. Listen, I don't think cliques are bad. They're just squads. They're, they're just friend groups. Now, we don't want them being closed off. We want to have them open. So by creating a, you know, uh, a separate group, squad, right, pod in your youth ministry, and calling out the spiritual leaders within that group, the alternatives are the skaters. You connect with that spiritual kid who, who loves to skate and you reach the chief and you reach the tribe, right? And so if, if we can mic drop or spotlight or reach the leaders of, of the students, man, what a powerful, man, and I'm, we're going over. You have to read the rest, okay? Man, thanks for joining me. I think we're at like 16 minutes or whatever now, so. Uh, we'll edit this down, get it going. Thank you. Uh, you know what? There's a question, and what I'm going to do is answer it in the in the blog this week. I'll put I'll post it Tuesday. I want to be mindful of your time, you know. So don't get mad at me if you're like just not getting into it. You're still taking notes and whatever, right? Uh, I want to. Most of us are pretty mobile, and we're already locking down. So, all right, taking our youth ministries from a mile wide and an inch deep, okay, to. Uh, maybe more of an inch wide or maybe a mile wide and a mile deep, right? But you can take students with their hunger, challenging students with their hunger, and fulfill that spiritual formation in students, okay? With just a little work, okay?
So put these things to work. I hope this has helped you. Again, uh, I'll do some editing, break this down. It'll be up on YouTube. We'll, you can catch it from our site at youthology.com and uh, the Facebook Live here will remain also. Thank you for joining me. I say it every week, I'm gonna say it again. The fact that you just spent a few minutes with us, a few extra minutes tonight with us, um, is an honor for me that you would take the time to do that. So God bless you, thank you, and have an awesome week.